Welcome back, everyone. We have an update from Region Biopharma Inc., which trades on the OTC pink sheets under the symbol RGBP. It's a biotech company focused on developing innovative treatments using autologous cell therapies, RNA and DNA-based immunotherapy, and small molecules in the immune oncology and autoimmune disease space. Please welcome President and CEO David Coase and Larry Harry Lander, Senior Scientific Consultant. Welcome, gentlemen. Happy New Year to you both. Well, Happy New Year to you. We're glad to be here today. All right, the floor is yours, David, and you know to call me back when you're ready for some questions. Will do. So I'd, I'd like to uh, wish everyone a happy new year. I would like to say uh, I had a presentation I was I had prepared, but then this morning when I got up, I had a, an email from one of our shareholders, and he had several questions in there that uh, I think touch on uh, the pulse of what all the shareholders are looking at, they'd like to have information on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the questions that the shareholder asked and see if we can't put a little uh, uh, color on them so that uh, everybody feels like we've addressed their uh, particular uh, issues. So we'll start out, uh, question number one was, in your opinion, what would make a, a financial partner choose region biopharma over any other company that's at the same stage that we are? Well, so I, I scratched my head for a minute and I said, you know, over the last several years, we've put together quite an impressive uh, uh, patent portfolio or intellectual property uh, portfolio. And that has taken us a long ways forward. Um, we have uh, uh, what we believe are really strong viable approaches to treating both cancer and uh, autoimmune diseases. Now, one thing that is frequently not brought up is that the market for autoimmune therapeutics uh, is projected to grow from $71.5 billion in 2023 to $123.5 billion in 2033 which uh, that puts in our mind the appetite with these larger pharma companies uh, is probably going to increase dramatically over, uh, over that period of time. And the acquisition of small biotech companies with novel IP, like Region is, uh, by larger, well-established pharma companies uh, is very commonplace and to be considered simply uh, not an anomaly. We look at, uh, uh, we remain dedicated to entering into a mutually beneficial relationship with a partner, which would enable us to bring our therapies to market. So what this basically means is we're in a position where as we get further and further into the studies that we're currently involved in, and as we have success in those studies, uh, it's fair to assume that at some point we're going to have some larger companies that will look at what we're doing as being of interest. Now, what that results in, it could be creating partnerships, could be uh, you know, some sort of, of uh, business combinations, but to suffice it to say, there's enough things going on in the biotech community on a daily basis where it's definitely fair to assume that with success will bring interest among the larger pharma companies. Next question is how do you plan on raising capital and what terms structurally? Um, okay, so we're a small company and we have to look at various uh, opportunities to finance the business uh, and the more mature we get, the better the terms we should receive. My belief is that the further we get down this road, the more likely we're going to attract, attract investment from some of the other uh, uh, larger companies that are out there that have an interest in the market space, that niche that we uh, 
we are, are building into. Um, long term, our objective is we would like to enter into some kind of licensing deal with an established, uh, well-capitalized biotech company, which would provide the capital we need to expand our product lines and get them through regulatory approvals uh, and bring our products to market. Let's see. Um, we have entered into early stage negotiations with larger entities. Uh, a long time ago when we first got into uh, uh, in our 2F6, the uh, checkpoint, we had calls from all around the world. The unfortunate thing at that point in time is we did not have the intellectual property portfolio that we have today. So we've come a long ways. Um, and I would assume that as we get results that are attractive, we're going to see that come back around. Okay, next question. Have you been in any talks with potential partners, suitors, indicating any interest in the company? Uh, I kind of addressed that already from the standpoint that since we, as an early stage company back in the day, uh, had received quite a few inquiries from major pharma companies, names you would recognize, but I'm not going to bring up here. Um, they're all very interested to see what we're doing, and they've all said that as soon as you get further down the road, we would have an interest in talking to you about how we might work together. I believe that that option is still out there. And as I said, I think as we get through uh, more of these clinical studies, it'll make us look much more attractive. Uh, Let's see here, just a second. Okay, this is probably a question <laughs> that uh, is near and dear to everybody's heart, and I'm not sure I can give you the answer that you're looking for. Uh, in the past two months, the stock price has been cut in half from $1.50 a share to 75 cents with a significant amount of volume that is traded. Um, there are also additional shares that have been added to the outstanding. It looks like dilution is causing the price to drop. Any comments? Okay, so we do have the equity line with Coventry. We have been very judicious in how many shares uh, we are putting to, com uh, to Coventry. I think that uh, I have received a number of emails from companies that apparently uh, look at, at uh, volatility in these over-the-counter stocks and have suggested that there's 47% of the shares that have traded have been uh, short sales. I have no way to substantiate that. I mean, they showed me some data that they have. Um, I have to take it at face value. Do I think there's a possibility there's short sales going on? There could be. Um, it seems like we've traded a lot more stock than we put to, uh, to Coventry. So volatility in the stock, this is why I said I can't really give you the answer you're looking for because there's more stock trading than, uh, than uh, should have. But that being said, the primary focus that we're looking at is going back to the first question where we're looking at an expansion at the very least in the autoimmune industry. Uh, there will be a dramatic thing that as we get down the road here, uh, I think all this stuff up in here is just, uh, just noise. I think that where we sit as a company over the long haul, we should see substantial results. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we should see uh, a much 
much greater return. Pardon me. So the short term, yeah, it's painful. I think longer term, um, we're all in much better, we will all be in much better shape. Uh, to this point, <coughs> oh, to this point, I've been running this company since I came back without taking any compensation for myself. That tells you I have been, and I do believe in where we're going as a company. I do have a great deal of confidence in what that means and what the outcome will be long-term. I can't control what's happening in the short term. I wish I could, but uh, you know, that's in the hands of market makers and, and uh, people that play around in the stock market. I look at what we're about and we're trying to create science. We're trying to create science that is an embitterment for the public, the health of the public. And that means that what we're doing, I believe is highly meaningful and is leading us to a place where we can make a difference in people's lives. Uh, Quick, I'd like a quick update from Harry as to what's happening with this latest study. I know that that's got to be something else on people's minds. Uh, thanks, David. Um, yeah, well, we're we're waiting. Um, the, the the contract research organization um, is currently performing, uh, generating the cells that we've designed and should be ready. I would say another two to three weeks. And, um, and then once those cells are ready, they can begin the uh, second phase of that, second part of that uh, study, which won't take too long. I, I, I expect um, results, let's call it in, in a month from now, plus or minus, um, depending upon how they, how they perform. But um, as I said in an earlier conference call, these cells, the Duracar cells that David is referring to, are designed uh, all the data looks like these are going to be applicable towards autoimmunity. And these experiments are designed to <clears throat> test that uh, in vivo, in, in vitro, to see whether these cells do possess anti-autoimmunity activity or if they do possess anti-cancer activity as we originally hypothesized, just, just in case. So um, again, it, uh, about a month or a month and a half, we'll, we'll have those data. Cool, that's very good. Now, I, I think, uh... Uh, we have a question about how long do we think it'll take us to, uh, to file an IND with the FDA? So you and I had discussed this. I think you mentioned that you thought it was about a two year process and the cost would be about $2 million. Yeah. Um, but that's over a two year process. Yeah. And it also represents being further down the road where you're more likely to uh, attract outside capital, uh, not having to rely so heavily on things like the equity line. So there's there's a point at which you start seeing that all the expenses, the money you put out are starting to come back to you because you're looking good as an entity that, that has a real niche that a lot of these pharma companies would like to exploit. Is that a fair statement? A absolutely, yes. Okay. Hey, David, Harry, I'm sorry to pop in and interrupt, but we got to move on. This was a great update. Um, thank huh. you guys so much. I know you'll be joining us probably in our next month. Is that correct? Yeah, I okay, anticipate sorry. we'll be back and we'll have more time. It's hard to jam it all into 10 minutes. It's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but to our viewers, you'll be on next month. So we'll, we'll look forward to that next month. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back.